Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You're now listening to The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. And if you're not accustomed to the saying by now, if you don't know me, get to know me. I hope everybody's having a safe, productive work week. I hope everybody's getting ready and revved up for the weekend because of the hard work that we put forth this week. And I'm excited and glad to be here and hopefully, just hopefully, Y'all listening to the blueprint as y'all as y'all wind down because the weekend is is upon us. I have to shout out the Buffalo Fanatics team. Everybody's trying to work hard and diligently to improve and grow the brand. And we cannot improve and grow this brand without the fans engaging, interacting, communicating with us. And we just glad that we are able to provide this stable platform because consistency is key. In anything in life, right? So I'm glad that we're able to provide this stable platform that that engages and can continue to grow our fan base. But today, I have to get right into it with our team. And I have to give a special, special thanks to two guys that's no longer a part of the organization. And that is Rex Ryan and Doug Whaley. Now I know a lot of people are like, hey Rich, hey Rich, Rex and Dougie? Dougie Fresh? Why Rex and Dougie Fresh? I have to tell you. One man is the main reason why I am thankful. And that man's name is Lorenzo Alexander. Lorenzo Alexander has been a blessing for our Buffalo Bills team. Am I right or am I right? I don't even think that's a debatable topic. Lorenzo Alexander has been a blessing for our Buffalo Bills team. And we don't have nobody to thank for that but Doug Whaley and Rex Ryan. We're talking about a guy that was a career special teams guy. His first eight years of his career with Washington and the Arizona Cardinals. Lorenzo Alexander. He made the Pro Bowl because of his special teams prowess. In 2012, he's had 16 starts in eight years in the NFL before coming to the Buffalo Bills. Majority of those starts was 12 starts with the Washington Redskins in 2010. He had three more starts with the Arizona Cardinals back in 2013. But not until he came to the Bills is when uh, Lorenzo Alexander began to flourish we're talking about a guy that that was supposed to play special teams when he came to our team in 2016 uh we drafted a guy named Shaq Lawson Shaq Lawson is now in his final year his contract who knows if he may get re-signed or not it may be all dependent on his production in this year and this season with Shaq Lawson but nevertheless when we drafted Shaq Lawson we thought the man was healthy right Shaq Lawson, he never had any issues in college, and and a red flag came up during the combine, during the testing, during during the medical evaluators' uh, time to really assess each NFL player, and that uh, problem, that red flag that came up with Shaq Lawson was his shoulder. His shoulder was a red flag. We thought it was healthy. He said he was healthy. Come to come to find out, Shaq Lawson ended up doing a swim move in OTAs. And now all of a sudden, Shaq Lawson needs shoulder surgery. Now we have a guy that nobody knew in Lorenzo Alexander. He was known as a special teams guy at best. He comes in, fills in that role for Rex Ryan and his 3-4 defense. Ended up with 64 tackles, 12 and a half sacks, and making the Pro Bowl. We have to uh, commend the journey of Lorenzo Alexander. He stayed in the NFL because he worked hard. He stayed in the NFL because uh, of his special teams prowess. A lot of people like to ignore special teams. Young kids, coaches, young players don't like to play special teams because they don't feel it's a part and it's a main phase of, of football. But Lorenzo Alexander is living proof. That special teams is vital to to a football team. And playing a great special teams role provided Lorenzo Alexander an opportunity to step in that outside linebacker and flourish with Rex Ryan in that 3-4 defense. Rex Ryan gets fired 
in comes Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott is a guy that runs a 4-3 defense. And we know Sean McDermott and we know coaching staffs, they like to keep uh, certain guys. But for the most part, they like to get their own guys. We've seen Sean McDermott make move after move, getting rid of Sammy Watkins, getting rid of Ronald Darby, getting rid of Marcel Darius, getting rid of a lot of Rex Ryan and Doug Whaley guys. The guy he did not get rid of, Lorenzo Alexander. And that's the testament to his hard work. That's a testament to his leadership. And that's a testament to his style of play uh, on the football field. He transitioned over to a 4-3 defense. And while he wasn't the 12 and a half sack guy that he was with Rex Ryan in 2016, he has nine and a half sacks, 139 total tackles in the past two years under Sean McDermott's defense. So we're talking about a, a hard-working guy. And we know in this day and age in the NFL, you're either uh, a 4-3 guy or you're either a 3-4 guy. 4-3 guys are not supposed to be 3-4 guys and vice versa. We've seen guys struggle to try to make the transition over from 4-3 to 3-4 or 3-4 to 4-3. Ask Jerry Hughes. Ask Jerry Hughes how that was. Playing a 3-4 defense coming out of TCU. He struggled. He looked like a bust uh, for the Indianapolis Colts. He comes to the Buffalo Bills. He plays a 4-3 defense. And Jerry Hughes has been one of the premier pass rushers ever since. It may not show in the numbers all the times in terms of sacks. But in terms of pressure in the quarterback. Jerry Hughes is one of the premier pass rushers still in. In this league today. Let's talk about another guy. Uh, that, that's not uh, on our team. Let's talk about Henry Anderson. Henry Anderson is a 3-4 guy. Who is playing with the Colts. And, and got traded to the New York Jets. And he excelled. Playing in uh, a different defense. In a defense that fit him. So the transition from playing one style of defense. To another style of defense. Usually hurts. A lot of guys. It did not hurt Lorenzo Alexander. And I know myself and from the, the rest of the fans from Buffalo Fanatics, we appreciate Lorenzo Alexander. And the reason I have to appreciate Lorenzo Alexander is because of his journey of working hard and, and showing that leadership. Uh, Sean McDermott was smart. In keeping Lorenzo Alexander as a leader. And it is showing in the locker room. It is showing on the football field. And we're going we're gonna to hope that Lorenzo Alexander can continue to be that driving force in the locker room. On and off the football field. So uh, shout out Lorenzo Alexander. Uh, shout out what he was able or what he's able to accomplish for our team. And we hope the best is yet to come. And it's crazy to say we hope his best is yet to come because Lorenzo Alexander is 36 years old and he's been playing pretty damn good football with the Buffalo Bills. So, uh, got to shout that man out. Moving on, we see what's going on with camp. Camp is, camp is on its way. Uh, we are well into training camp. We're not even, it's not even on its way no more. We're well into training camp. We're a week before our first game. And we have some concerns, right? We have some concerns with injuries. The main concern that we have with injuries is Mitch Morse. <clears throat> We've made uh, Mitch Morse uh, the highest paid center in the NFL. Uh, and deservingly so, in my opinion. When you come from a, a small market like the Buffalo Bills, and when you have a need uh, at center, at the center position, like the Buffalo Bills had, uh, we have to do something to upgrade that position. And we went ahead and we got 26-year-old Mitch Morse. But now the question is, was it a mistake? Was it a mistake to not only making Mitch Morse the highest paid center in the league, but was it a mistake to sign Mitch Morse in the first place? The first thing I thought of is, why Kansas City never tried to make 
Mitch Morrison offer. Mitch Moss is an is a very productive center when he's on the football field. But uh we've seen that he's been taken into concussion protocol. This would be uh Mitch Morph's fourth concussion and it has some cause to concern. I've been looking up some some news and notes trying to figure out the history of Mitch Moss and it seems like he contemplated retirement a time or two because of his concussion history. So I want to know are are we as fans should we be concerned with his with his concussion history? I'm going to answer that question for myself one time. I'm very very concerned. Our offensive line Definitely looks different when Mitch Morse is out there compared to a Russell Bordon. We've seen in practices and the news and notes, whether if you're following through the Buffalo Bills Twitter or you're following through Bleacher Report, we've seen that the pressure is more substantial when Russell Bordon is in the game as opposed to Mitch Morse. Josh Allen doesn't have that time in the pocket. And when Josh Allen doesn't have that time in the pocket, it's, it's showing in his erratic throws. So we hope that Mitch Morse can recover from this. We hope that we pay this man and we can get uh, a very good center in Mitch Morse. And hopefully we can stabilize this this concussion injury that he's happened to have over the last few years of his of his productive NFL career. He missed a number of games last year because of concussion, and we're going to see if he can overcome that. Health is first. I'm the type of person, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan till I die. Uh, I want to see our team make the playoffs, but if I have to choose health over playoffs, I'm going to choose health. So hopefully Mitch Morse knows what he's doing, and we can get uh, a, a a great great effort out the center position. Whoever is playing center, I know one damn thing: we have to go out and draft the center next year. Whether it's the first round or the second round, the third round, we have to go ahead and draft the center. The hope is Mitch Morse can play play through it. We hope Mitch Morse can these concussions can subside, and he doesn't have. Uh, this lingering concussion history with our team, the Buffalo Bills, and we can sign a center that can that can grow behind Mitch Morse. And if Mitch Morse gets hurt again, this center that can come in and be an upgrade over Russell Bordon. Uh, moving on, Ray Ray, Ray Ray McLeod. Ray Ray McLeod has been getting a lot of praise in training camp. Right? We've we've know who we know who our five receivers are. We know that Zay Jones is going to be on the team. We know that Cole Beasley is going to be on the team. We know that John Brown is going to be on the team. And it looks thus far like uh, Cole Beasley and John Brown are are very good investments so far coming into camp, right? We know those guys are going to be on the team. We know Andre Roberts is going to be on the team because of his special teams prowess. I do think uh, Andre Roberts is a very underrated receiver, and he can come in as a receiver and do things. Uh, but the six was always up for grabs. When we when we was thinking about Buffalo Bills and having six wide receivers, we was thinking Dekel Williams because he's a big guy. He's a physical freak. He's a physical specimen. And that's not something that we have with our other receiving guys, right? We don't have a big physical guy that can out-muscle guys and possibly out-jump guys the way that Dekel Williams can. So he would add another element to our receiving corps. So we would hope, we was hoping that that he can make a push for the sixth spot. Uh, we also have Isaiah McKenzie, who's been very productive ever since he's been with the Buffalo Bills last year. Brian Dable's offense changed dramatically once we implemented uh, Isaiah McKenzie. We know he has some some fumbling issues. That's why the Denver Broncos let him go in the first place. But he definitely has talent. He's a definitely an explosive playmaker with the ball in his hands. And we can see why uh, Isaiah McKenzie and Dekel Williams was getting talked about as possibly the last receiver making the team if, if we even keep six receivers. One forgotten man was Ray Ray McLeod. Ray Ray McLeod has came and, and, and really challenged himself in the offseason. And he's becoming to stand out in training camp. And I always think, and I always thought that there, is, there are three types of players, right? There's the player that performs with 
uh, no no pads. You know them 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 special guys, them all stars that look like all stars and Pro Bowl guys when there's no pads on. <laughs> we I I hate those guys by the way. I hate those OTA Pro Bowl guys. I hate them. But nevertheless, the those are one of the types of guys that we have uh, in the league. We have the guys that perform with with no pads on. Then we have the guys that perform and stand out in training camp. Like Ray Ray McLeod is doing now, he's having he's putting together a very good training camp where he's getting noticed by Sean McDermott, he's getting noticed by our receiving coach Chad Hall, and he's getting noticed by our offensive coordinator Brian Dable. And then we have the guys that come in when the preseason starts and have excellent preseason games. And I'm hoping that Ray Ray McLeod can turn his great camp against his own teammates. To a great preseason against other teams, against other players when they're guarding you and when they're covering you. Can you still have that same effect? Can you still have that, uh, bring that same impressive uh, element to the coaches when you're playing other teams? So I'm hoping Ray Ray McLeod can transition over to an impressive preseason. And if he can transition over to that, Ray Ray McLeod <laughs> may surprise some guys and make this ball club. Um, let's get your thoughts when you hear this podcast. Uh, any comments that you have, what you what you think, who you think can be possibly the sixth receiver. Uh, a lot of people are having some concerns with Robert Foster and him dropping passes. I'm not really overly concerned with Robert Foster and dropping passes yet. Uh, it's it's still training camp. Don't get me wrong. You don't want to see it. You don't want to see guys dropping passes. You want to see your guys coming out and performing, especially after a whole off season where you can really hone in on on your attributes, where you can really work hard and 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 try to get better uh, catching the ball, try to get better running routes. And Robert Foster coming out of Alabama, he was so far behind on the depth chart, he didn't get that much time to play with Alabama. He didn't get that much time to to really develop his game. So this offseason being that he came along strong for the Buffalo Bills last year, especially with Josh Allen throwing the deep ball, we would hope to come and see a Robert Foster really excel in this training camp. It hasn't been the case so far at the moment in Buffalo Bills camp, but let's not go ahead and get and cut Robert Foster off the roster so quick. We see how training camp can fool and can give a misinterpretation on guys. And in some cases, look at Patrick Mahomes last year. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not comparing Patrick Mahomes and Robert Foster. But Patrick Mahomes, he threw a lot of interceptions last year in camp. A lot of eyebrows was raised every 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 time I looked. It was Patrick Mahomes throwing interception. Patrick Mahomes throwing an interception. The season started and Patrick Mahomes was the MVP of the league. Will Robert Foster be the MVP of the league? No, he won't. <laughs> uh, I don't believe that's the case. But can he improve? Can he uh, build upon his first season uh, during the second his second season? He definitely can improve. And Robert Foster, I'm not overly concerned just yet. Uh, He's having uh, guys that he has to come and compete with. John Brown and Cole Beasley. We are still dealing with human beings at the end of the day. We're talking about a young kid that wants to come in and compete and want, want to work as hard as he possibly could. And sometimes the nerves can get the best of you. Especially when the Buffalo Bills make the investments that they made. The, uh, the nerves can definitely get the best of you. So I'm not overly concerned with Robert Foster. But we definitely have to keep an eye on him going forward. Uh, Frank Gore. We talk about leaders. And I talk about Loren- Lorenzo Alexander. And I talk about Sean McDermott uh, getting rid of guys. Sean McDermott got rid of majority of Rex Ryan and Doug Whaley guys. The guys he kept that was on the last regime are leaders. He kept Patrick DeMarco. He kept a Lorenzo Alexander. He kept, it doesn't have to be the most talented guys in the locker room, but he kept guys that are natural leaders and and that would help the culture and spread that good culture 
around the Buffalo Bills locker room and we see why uh, the Buffalo Bills implemented a guy like Frank Gore. A guy that's 35 years old playing running back that's supposed to be retired by now. That's supposed to be well past his prime. And Frank Gore is not only productive, Frank Gore is a leader. And he's going to be a leader to Sean McCoy. He's motivation to LaShawn McCoy. He's motivation to uh, Devin Singletary. He's motivation to the entire football team. So I really love the fact that Sean McDermott continues to find older, productive leaders. And I don't think that should be ignored from uh, Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean, and our Buffalo Bills team. And I really have to applaud that. Uh, Preseason is coming up. August 8th will be here right before you know it. I expect our Buffalo Bills to to work hard and to find players that wants to be on this team. We have to find other players to fill out our depth chart. Levi Wallace is entrenched as the starter. We heard Leslie Frazier say Levi Wallace is the starter. Uh, am I a fan necessarily of that? I'm not a big fan of that. I would rather him, I would rather us really have a position battle for that number two cornerback spot. But when you think about it again, Levi Wallace played played uh, very well last year, coming in, filling in at that number two corner spot, and he deserved the first crack. So I'm not mad at the first crack, but we can't ignore EJ Gaines. We can't ignore uh, Kevin Johnson and what they can possibly do as number two corners as well. And the preseason is going to really show who deserves that spot. Who deserves that role. Michael Hyde. Uh, Michael Hyde uh, injured his shoulder the other day. We're going to see how he progresses. We're going to see what happens with him. Raphael Bush retired. We signed uh, another Carolina Panther guy. <laughs> I'm not surprised at that. Uh, I know Eric Berry's still out there. Eric Berry is, a, is, a, a, is a, in my opinion, a, a very good in-the-box safety. And if Micah Hyde having any injury issues, any lingering in injury issues, I think Eric Berry should be one of the guys that we can call and that can fill a role. We talk about leaders. This guy, this guy has to be a leader. This guy overcame cancer. He, this guy battled back and worked hard and was determined to get back in the NFL after he had cancer and we know cancer can be a serious thing both my parents had cancer my mother and father had cancer my father made it my mother didn't so it's it's definitely serious and I definitely have to commend Eric Berry for even coming back and excelling and playing at a high level football after he beat cancer and that's a guy that I would love to have on the team if we have lingering issues in the safety positions uh Episode 10 of the Blueprint, man. I hope everybody's enjoying. I hope everybody's going to continue to follow along. The The key to being great is being consistent. And that's what we are That's what we are doing. We're not attempting to do it. We're doing that over here with the Buffalo Fanatics. And we just hope that you continue to continue to support, continue to grind with us as we as we build this thing and we take this thing all the way to the top. Shout out. Uh, Rico, Rico's doing an excellent job on the YouTube podcast. Um, uh, not the podcast, his YouTube channel. Have to shout him out. He has a bunch of listeners. He has a bunch of fans, and and deservingly so. I call him the king, King Rico, and I call him the king for a reason. Uh, the king of content. We have a lot of kings <laughs> with the Buffalo uh, fanatics. Got to shout out Body, uh, Bobby, in what he's continued to produce as the content king. In, on Instagram providing that information minute in and minute out and and we just continue to strive to to be great and we hope y'all continue to to follow and y'all continue to support and get other people to support as well uh it's been fun man I'll get back more next week and in, in indulging and in, and in going in more in the buff on the Buffalo Bills, our first preseason game is is coming and is arising quickly. I believe it's against the Indianapolis Colts, and I will be here to talk about the first game of the season of the preseason next week and how we did uh, with the starters and our bench guys. But for now, episode ten of the Blueprint. 
It's been fun. I'm A. Rich, Hakeem Richens. If you don't know me, get to know me. Until next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.